Hi and welcome to the fourth category of mini program challenges. In this category, we are going to solve uh, 10 uh, mini programs regarding functions. Uh, right now on the screen, you are seeing the timestamp for this lecture. So I'm going to go ahead and give you five seconds to just take a look at it, and then we are going to get started with this lecture. So let's go ahead and let's dive right in. The first question, the first mini program says create a function that can accept two arguments, name and age, and print their fun uh, their value. So go ahead, pause the video, and after three seconds, you're going to see my solution. Now it says uh, create a function. I'm going to call it demo, and that is going to grab name, and it's going to grab age and then it prints their value so i'm going to say print name uh there is a dot it should be a comma there we go so we want to print name and we want to print age very simple so i'm going to say demo let's say ben and let's say he is 25. let's go ahead and let's run it, it says ben 25. That's it for the first question. Let's dive into the second one. The second one says write a function such that it, it can accept a variable length of argument and print all arguments values. Pause the video. After three seconds, you will be able to see my solution. So let's dive in. I'm going to say define func. I'm just going to say func. And I'm going to pass in here arcs so and uh, a variable number of arguments right and i'm going to say for i in arcs this is going to be this is going to return an iterable and each time i want to print uh, the i when we iterate over it now i'm going to call the function and i'm going to pass in 20 uh, 10 0. let's go ahead and let's just Remove the T. Let's go ahead and let's run it. So it says 20, 10, and 0. Now, it doesn't matter how many arguments you pass in here. If you say, hey, and then say, R, and then say, you, and then let's go ahead and let's run it. And say, hey, are you doing? And then, well... And finally, let's just add three question marks. Let's run it. There we go. That's it for the second question. Let's move on to the third one. So the third one says write a function calculation. So I've uh, so there is a function that you need to write the name for it, uh, such that it can accept two variables and calculate the addition and subtraction of them. And it also and it and also is much it must return both addition and subtraction in a single return call go ahead pause the video you're going to see my solution after three seconds how did you do the challenge how was the challenge i'm sure you did great so i'm going to say a diff calculation um, I'm going to pass in A and B as the two numbers. It is going to return A plus B and A minus B. There we go. And then I'm going to say result is equal to the calculation. And I'm going to pass in 40. And I'm going to pass in 10. And I'm just going to print the result. Let's go ahead and let's run it. It says 50 and 3. Uh, so 40 plus 10, that's 50. 40 minus 10, that is 30. So 50 plus uh, 50 and 30. Uh, so that's it for question number three. Let's move on to question number four. So question number four says, create a function, show employee, and um, uh, in such a way that it should accept employee name, its salary, and display both. Now, there is a condition. If the salary is missing in the function call, assign default value of 9,000 for salary. 
not uh, that is just redundant all right so go ahead pause the video and i'm sure you're going to do great how was the mini program i'm sure you did great now let's dive into the solution i'm going to create a function show underscore employee it's going to grab name now the cool thing is that for uh, function parameters salary uh, we could also specify default uh, values default values they're going to kick in whenever any whenever no argument for that uh, parameter it has been passed then it's going to grab instead of throwing an error it's going to grab the default value so i'm going to say print a format is string i'm going to say employee employee is this one uh and i'm going to say um no i'm not going to say employee i'm going to say this name has a salary of has a salary of come on of and i'm going to pass in the salary there so let's just say salary there we go now let's call the function in for both cases i'm going to say show employee i'm going to pass in john and let's pass in a salary so i'm going to say uh, 12,000 let's save that let's go ahead and let's run it so when there is a value for salary the default value doesn't run John has a salary of 12,000 but if I just call um, Jane and do not pass any salary we are going to see that Jane has a salary of the default what is that that is 9,000 that's it for question number four let's move on to question number five now question number five it requires a couple of more things from us right so it says create an inner function to calculate the addition in the following way so create an outer function first that will accept two parameters a and b that's cool create an inner function inside the outer function that will calculate the addition of a and b at last the outer function will add five a to the to the addition and return it so pause the video attempt the challenge i'm sure you're going to do great so how was the challenge i'm sure it was a piece of cake so i'm going to say def def outer funk i'm going to say outer funk let's pass in a and b that is the first requirement the inner func so inner func it has to calculate the sum of a and b so i'm going to pass an a and b and i'm going to say return a plus b cool okay there is something missing there we go and then after that whatever the value is uh, we want the outer function to add 5 to it. So I'm going to store the function call of the inner func within this variable. So inner func, and uh, it's going to accept a and b. The a and b are from the uh, original or the outer function uh, parameters. And then the outer function is going to return add plus 5 just call the outer function now the inner function is going to be called when we call the outer function we don't need to specifically call the inner function so I'm going to say result is outer func let's pass in 5 and 10 so 5 plus 10 that's 15 but we should get 20 because that outer function is going to add 5 to it so print result let's go ahead and save that there we go so we got 20 that's it for question number five let's move on to question number six now question number six says write a recursive uh, function to calculate the sum of numbers from zero to ten so go ahead pause the video you're going to see my solution after three seconds so how was the challenge i'm sure you did great 
uh, let's say def uh, calculate calculate uh, underscore sum where is the f in the def and we are we need a number right so i'm going to say f num if if num is true then we are going to say return num plus we know that some values they have the boolean true which are truthy and some values have the boolean false they're represented by that which are false we are using that so i'm going to call the function and I'm going to say num minus one. So this is going to call it recursively. We are going to say else num uh, return zero. Return zero. There we go. Now let's grab the result and say calculate sum. Let's pass in 10 and then print the result. Just go ahead and run it. And you can see we got 55. All right. So if I pass in 5, let's just go ahead and run that, we got 15. So it said, I calculate the sum of numbers. So that we have already calculated this, but not in the recursive way. So that's it for question number 6. Very easy stuff, very, very simple stuff. Now, it says assign a different name to function, to a function and call it with the new name. It doesn't matter what function that is as long as you assign it with a new name and just go ahead and call that function. So pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. How was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. So I'm going to say def display. I'm going to call, I'm going to create a function. I'm going to say display student uh, name and age. Very simple. And I'm going to say print name and age. Now, if I call display student and if I pass in Emma, as she is 34. And then if I say, if I just go ahead and run this, we are going to see Emma 34. So it says, the question says that write a function and then name the name that function rename the function and call it with that new name so i'm going to say show student this is the new name and within here i'm going to store a reference to that function and then i'm going to call the show student student there we go so the first argument as you can see highlighted is name i'm going to say um jelly right and she is i don't know like 24 let's go ahead and let's run that so we got emma 34 but the same function has been called with a different name jelly 24. so that's it for question number seven let's move on to question number eight now it says generate a python list of all even numbers between 4 and 30. Now, this range could be changed. This is just to give you an idea. You could say generate all even numbers between 1 and 100, whatever. This is just to give you a clue on how, what is the data that you need to work on. So, pause the video. You're going to see my solution after 3 seconds. So, how was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. Uh, this is going to be a one-liner, so I'm going to say print. We need to create a list, so I'm going to say list. And then we need a range, right? Range is going to generate numbers for us. So we want to have a starting point of 4, an ending point of 30, and the step is 2. Very simple. And then we got a list of all the numbers going from 4 to 30, all the even numbers. Now, again, you could just say 300. doesn't really matter. It's going to give you 300. That is That was just a, a, an ending, a starting and an, in, an ending point for you to have an idea of what it is that you need to work on. All right? So we go to question number nine. In this question, where is the question for question number nine? Hmm. Um, question number nine, question number 10. Okay, so we don't have a question number nine. I'm going to cut uh, question 
okay this is this seems like the solution why am i showing you the solution um i don't know what's happened here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to figure out where the question has gone to and if there was a question or even if there wasn't i'm going to come back and just for you it's going to be one second so that was a mistake uh, we just have nine questions for functions and the final question says return the largest item from the given list and you can see the solution for a second I think I you saw the solution but just go ahead and for the sake for the sake of learning just pretend you didn't see that and try to come up with the solution you're going to see my solution after three seconds so let's dive into the solution first things first we need to find the largest integer within this list so for that i'm gonna directly do a print statement we have a max function that is going to uh, accept an iterable and i'm going to pass in list and this is going to give us the largest number there we go so the largest number here is 24. with this our fourth category of functions many program have um it has come to an end see you in the next section uh next section see you in the next lecture where we are going to go over uh category five